个季节啊，这小宅有名。Prog Watch, music that tells a story, with your friend and host, Big Tony Rausick, aka Prog Squatch. 
on the radio by Grand Tour from their first album, Heavy on the Beach. According to Joe, there could be some more music coming from that project, and he talks about that in our interview. So let's listen in on some of that now. The new album is called House of the Mind, correct? Yes, that's correct, yeah. Okay, and Spirit had some pretty heavy lyrics that seemed like angry and cynical at times, maybe even bordering on despair, but then there was optimism and hope. What what can we expect on the new album in regard to like the lyrical themes, and is, is the music continuing in more of like a symphonic direction as Spirit seemed to be? I, I, would, I would say this album, yes, the House of Mind is quite... It is quite symphonic um, in places. There's kind of one track seems to be a there's one track um, song with the wandering Jackimus. It's called. It's a kind of weird name. I, asked, I would need to ask Jim what it actually means, but it's kind of like a theme from. It's as if it could have been on the Spirit album, but it is. It is different. Um, this album is totally different from the other albums. Definitely, there is a track on it. The very last track. Uh, which is it's not on the vinyl album it's not on the vinyl but it's on the CD this was a song I'd been pestering pestering Jim for years to put this going to come back and do some of the stuff we did we've got a backlog of tracks that we did back in the 80s that I would love love to do on a CD Uh, but it's trying to kind of get Jim to kind of try and persuade him Uh, because all it was kind of basically Neil Prog. Uh, that was classed in that that's your kind of genre but to be honest I loved this stuff I really loved it and I've picked out about seven or eight songs that I've tried to say to Jim for the next album why don't we do a free album and put four or five tracks that were recorded back in the 80s uh, we didn't do them probably justice but we could do that and give it away as like a, a basically a free CD we wouldn't have to go, we, we could mix it ourselves um, rather than, where we get our albums mixed, um, the guy who does it, Rob Aubrey, who's absolutely fantastic, who does all IQ, Spock Spears album, mm-hmm. the guy's fantastic. But we could do a separate one that we could actually probably mix ourselves, which would be good enough quality to give away as a free. So I'm going to try and persuade them to do that for uh, the next album. So, um, so the new album is not. There's not that. There's a couple of weak kind of instances where yes, there is things going on about death again. Uh, but the the new album's slightly different. It's in a slightly different. I, I can't remember what Jim's words were. I'd need to actually look to see uh, what he'd actually posted up to any of the kind of magazines. We'd sent a week kind of spiel to the magazines to tell them what it was about, um, and. Uh, it was, it's, it's just kind of weird it's, went, it's on a different direction it's not to do with, it's to do with time the new album's to do with time and distance and where we are in the universe it's it's, it's to do with that rather than um, life and death but he said it's he came up with I can't remember the word he came up with it's, I would need to look the, the word up in the dictionary because I didn't even know what it meant but uh, but these, the new album's totally different again and uh, to me it's a, it's a different sound as well um, and we've kind of moved forward and that's why I like the way that our first album the second album was the repeat of the first and the third album was the repeat of the everyone I think has evolved and that's what I think was just good with progressive music, you're basically progressing your, your, your sound and everybody every single person that's wrote to us that's heard the new album has turned around and said the yeah, absolute because I was really, I was terrified I'm going because this one was so different. Uh, but I don't know every album. Disobey, when we've done Disobey, I really love Disobey. Um, and I love Fanfare and Fantasy, but I was sitting thinking, after Disobey, is anybody going to like Fanfare? And they loved it, thought it was better. And then we went to Spirit, they loved that. The new one, it's getting fantastic reviews. So um, I, I always sit and say, if anybody gives us a bad review, I sit and say, that's part and parcel. Not everybody's going to like every album, but it's a positive reviews so far, uh, which I'm really, really pleased with. Great. That's great. So you mentioned you have uh, Lorelei coming up in Germany. So what yes. what else is coming up here? Uh, when when might we look for the new Grand Tour? And are you planning on a lot of gigs or what's going on? The Grand Tour, I've never actually done any gigs at all with Grand Tour. Um, it's a just studio based, totally studio based, uh, and 
Hugh has always said when Hugh left Abel Gans, um, he left basically because he didn't he didn't like the direction Abel Gans were going. They were kind of going, becoming more of a folk band. That's what he said. They're becoming more of a folk band rather than a progressive band. So he got fed up with it and went. No, although he's appeared, he appeared on the last album actually, um, but he just said no, it's not my stuff, and he wasn't really happy playing live again. But he's always said never say never with Grand Tour. If we got an invite to say Rosfest, uh, we, would, we would jump at it. I would jump at it in a minute. Um, the Veruno Festival in Italy, which is in September, we're playing the Veruno Festival. Um, Common of errors. So, but you only get to play that festival once. So, you, once you, it doesn't matter who you are, how big you are, you only ever get to play it once. But a lot of bands get around it by releasing an album under a different name. So that, <laughs> oh, so that would be the only way we could. But there's a band, uh, Synesthesia, who were signed by IQ's label. They are now called uh, uh, Synesthesia. They've changed their name to another band. Now, oh yeah, yeah. They play Kairos, there. Kairos. I had I had a couple of guys on earlier this year. Yeah, yeah. They guys are that's a really good band. Yeah, they're so young they too. Played, they played Veruno. Yeah, young band, great band. I think the girl that uh, one of the girls organizes the Veruno Festival. Her son plays with Kairos and also played Bissana. But they changed their name and she kind of laughed because she obviously Kairos has played. The Veruno Festival as well, and that's what they say. That's how they get around it because they were a totally different band. <laughs> Even though she's an organizer, she wouldn't have let Synesthesia um, play it again. But um, we they, they contacted us. They contacted us at the start of this year, um, Kairos, and asked they were doing a, a kind of European tour. It was like twelve gigs, and they asked us if we wanted to play it with them, but. Because we had our our own gigs organised, plus we've got basically got holidays, we just do this as, um, I won't say for fun, but but we do, it's not a full-time job for us, all the guys have got jobs. We do this as, um, it's uh, kind of fun for us, so, and we don't do it to make money. If we make money, sell merchandise, everything goes back into the band funds, and that goes for the recording, pays for a t-shirt, pays for any gigs, that we've got to pay for ourselves. Um, so we couldn't do the one. We, could, we, we basically, excuse me, said to them that we'd love to have done it. He said, but we couldn't all get the time off. That would have been taking two weeks off of work. I've got my own holidays that I need to do uh, with my partner. So, and the guys in the band have got holidays with their, their, their wives and partners as well. So we couldn't, take, we couldn't take an extra two weeks out. Plus we were kind of worried that the band Kairos are totally unknown. Although they were part of the other band, they're basically an unknown band. And we didn't want to be going into playing um, Holland and Germany and maybe playing to 30 or 40 people because we didn't know how many people would have turned up because they were unknown. So we said, nah, it's just it was too much of a, a risk and it would have cost us too much money. So um, unfortunately, we said to them, no, we can't do it. It's just too risky for us. And I, remember I said, we've got other things kind of planned we've got lots of gigs organised for this year but they were all they're all festivals basically apart from last Friday there we played in Holland that was our own gig okay so uh yeah you said everyone else has uh day jobs but uh you retired didn't you I retired I was in the fire service for nearly 30 years yeah I saw that on Facebook yeah, I never ever told, because most people never knew what I did, because I never ever advertised the fact that I was on Facebook. I only ever advertised it when I left the fire service, which was two years ago. Um, and that was the only time I actually put on Facebook that I was in the fire service. Um, and people kind of then came to me going, oh, I didn't know you were in the fire service. I said, well, I, just, I don't like to kind of say what I did. Um, nobody ever asked. Most people just thought I'd done music. Um, and I went, no, that was it. That was a full-time job. And then I worked in the airport for a year and a half. I was doing security in the airport. I actually, I finished the fire service on a Tuesday and I started in the airport on the Wednesday. Okay. So I never even took a break. Um, and then I left the, the airport in December. I've now got a job. I'm doing a kind of caretaker at a kind of luxury block of flats in Glasgow. So I'm one of the caretakers. So I basically stay in a flat 
on site, so I don't even need to drive. I got up in the morning and uh, in the morning, um, I start at half past eight in the morning. So I got up at half seven, I have a shower, and I'm at, I'm at my work. So it's really good. Yeah. So and that works out really well. So. So your retirement, you've been working basically. Yeah, basically, <laughs> because it's because it's the fire service. Basically, you can retire there. I could have done another five years in the fire service, but like every single job worldwide, it doesn't matter where you're working, um, the 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 kind of the thing comes in that the, the the governments come in and take money off the pensions, they crucify, nobody gets away, nobody's getting wage rises. So I'm sitting there thinking, do I want to do another five years of this? I'd done my time, um, and, I, and I didn't want to sit and risk losing money, more money on my pension and um, sitting there working away. But, uh, and I was terribly sent to say risking my life. I, although I'd done it at the kind of level, I, I was lucky enough to end up becoming one of the bosses. So when I ran in charge, I used to tell the guys, the guys that did what I used to do, um, so I ran in front. I was in charge of the fire engines. Then I became in charge of one of the stations. So at the end of the day, my risk kind of level dropped slightly. Although I would turn out to big fires, I could still be involved, but the risk was a lot less. Mm-hmm. Uh, you obviously saw the fire, the one in London there. Yeah. Uh, last week, right? I mean, well, that's the kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I would have, I, even though I was a boss, I probably had that. I'd have probably been inside that building as well. Uh, and I take my hat off to these guys, especially the guys in um, the United States, anywhere in the world that does jobs like that, the fire service, the armed service, the ambulance, the police, I always have the utmost respect for them. Same here. Because I know what it's like and I know what, what these people go through. Uh, and after 9-11 happened in the USA mm-hmm. and when there was 343 firefighters died, I went, Jesus, hell, that's... I mean, that just brought it down to earth that they guys went up, went to the work, up one morning, went to the work, and it was just either your luck or your, you were unlucky whether you were on that day or not, or the next couple of days, um, and they guys lost their lives trying to see. So it's, uh, that I can understand from that point of view. But no, fire service wise, I love the job, probably the best job in the world, but. Um, I'm actually quite a job. I, I, I don't actually, I miss the guys. I miss the guys that I worked with. Um, but I don't miss the job. The politics in the, the fire service now is, is, is unbelievable. But I, I take it it's the same the world over. Um, politics come into things. Probably. <laughs> Let's hear another great tune. This one from Joe and his, quote, other band, Comedy of Errors. Actually, it's his primary band probably although i'm not sure there's this whole thing going on where the two are kind of interconnected at this point but anyway from their latest album house of the mind this is song of wandering jackamus
Song of Wandering Jacomus by Comedy of Errors from their fantastic new album, House of the Mind. Now let's hear a little more of my conversation with Joe Kearney. Basically, the next one with the Errors album, Jim's probably got some ideas. He's already said he's working on things. I'm really hoping that we could maybe bring some of the old stuff back. Whether he will or not, I don't know, because, because he keeps saying to me, Right, I brought I brought um, Ever Be the Prize Bank. He said I put that on it just for you. So um but I'm hoping I can persuade him. The other guys, the guys in the band are quite up to doing some of the older stuff. Um Jim Jim likes to, to keep some of the older stuff and to maybe take a couple of sections out an old track. He's on this album here, um the actual track, The House in the Mind, there's a bit in it that came from a track back in the 80s and um, he's taking a section out and I've been because I'm going I've heard that before somewhere but he said no that's what he doesn't want to bring some of the 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 whole maybe the whole track because he likes to pick wee sections that he likes but we had a track back in the we done as a demo tape I think it was about 1987 there was a track on it called Britannia and um, it was basically all about the it was it was bit Margaret Thatcher's Britain at the time, which where uh, there was no money. People there was there was about four million people unemployed, and the the people there were so many people just couldn't get jobs. And the, the song was basically about Britannia being the when when Britain used to kind of or the United Kingdom basically used to rule the world. If you look at the old maps, it was all used to be covered in pink. Right, you they used to run them, and basically we just became. We're not, we weren't the same kind of nation anymore. But the, the, that track, I absolutely loved. The first five minutes of the track, I've said to Jim, why don't we record the first five minutes and then make another song out of it? Still keep that out because when it went into a track that I didn't really like, the, the guitar and that came in, it kept, went a bit heavy. But although the song was great, I liked the first five minutes. It was just really nice. But it was just myself singing and then the piano came in. So for the first five minutes, there wasn't anything apart from myself and the piano, and it was a really, really nice track. So I'd like Jim to maybe do that. So that would be my only hope, that we bring some of the tracks. We've got, must have about 15 tracks back in the 80s that at least six or seven of them are really, really good tracks that we could probably put on. We could probably do an album, but Jim wouldn't want that because he'll see that as that was the end, this is now, but I would like to do it and give it away as a... a yeah, an EP, piece. yeah, sounds like a great yeah. idea. Yeah. But the way that IQ did it with their last album, they brought up, there was a, a separate CD on uh, with their last album, The Road of Bones, um, so, and I think that's a good thing, because people think they're getting something, they're getting two CDs um, um, for basically the, the price of a normal CD, so I'd like to do that, but I'll see if Jim... We'll come up to it. And the next thing we're going to work on is the DVD from Rosfest. We still haven't even... We've kind of started on it. We started kind of doing a bit of work on it and then it fell away because of the, the album. So I've said to Jim and the rest of the guys, we need to go on and get the the DVD sorted so that we can hopefully have a DVD out um, maybe within the next 12 months anyway. It takes a wee bit of time to kind of mix it all together. Um, but it's because we've got a separate audio and the, the video. We've got, I think there's four separate video channels and then we've got the, the, I think there's two separate audio channels so we need to mix it all together. Mm-hmm. And then it, it, it'll cost us, by the time we send it down to the guy that does the mixing, that's where a lot of the cost comes in. So if we can do most of it ourselves, we'll send it down to him and hopefully... Hopefully within the next 12 months we can have a live DVD. Because it was actually a really great gig. Um, and the video footage is actually quite good. Um, but it needs somebody to piece it together. Uh, there's a couple of the guys in the band can actually do it. So, But it's just quite, it's time consuming. Sure. I can't, I've not got it. I've just, I don't have the, the brains to do it. I just did too much for me. But one of the guys is very, very good at it. So he said that he'll have a wee look at it and, and mix it, but it's whether he can mix the audio in with it. I know he can do the video, but the audio is a totally different kettle of fish. Um, um, obviously, because there's any wee kind of glitches, I've said we can sort them in the studio. Um, there was a couple of wee glitches during the 
not not during the show. It was um, that the something happened during the show, and there was a, a glitch with the, the sound somewhere. But we've already sorted. Well, that's one of the things we sorted. It was just a sound problem, but that was easily sorted. So uh, it's time consuming, but again, it's another one that. I'd love to be able to say that I've got a live DVD out. And the guys in the band would love it as well. That was the whole point of recording it, was to put it out as a DVD. It's just that we've not got around to mixing it yet and doing it. Right. Sounds like a big project. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, so, yeah, we can look for, hopefully, a live DVD in the next year. And uh, we've got the House of the Mind. And uh, what about a grand tour? You said you guys were working on the second album, right? I mean... The set, we've got the second album, as I said, Hugh has written all the... I've actually, I've heard every track on it. Really, really good. One of the tracks is... Um, excuse me, that's my iPad just falling down there. One of the tracks on it's called Back Back in the Zone, I think it's called. Now, Able Gangs, back in the 80s, they've got... They've got a... It's not a new CD, it's a, a redone CD that the... the um, Hugh had been working on a lot of tracks with... Um, Alan Reed, who was the original singer who sang with Palace. Um, right. So Alan Reed, they'd asked, the people have been asking, could we get get a DVD done, uh, not a DVD, a, a CD done of the Abel Gann, some of the earlier music. So Hugh spent probably over a year um, bringing up some of the old stuff from their old CDs, that the, the, no CDs, it was, it was basically cassette tapes. Yeah. But Hugh had had them all on his computer, so he got them sorted, and what he did was spent a lot of time, brought all the tracks up, and one of the tracks that they used to do was called The Dead Zone. I think it was about must have been 14, 16 minute long track. I, I'm familiar so with that, yeah. The, yeah, The Dead Zone. So what he's got is one of the Grand Tour tracks on this new album is called Back in the Zone, and it's basically the wee, the little theme is in there, from the Dead Zone, so he's put the B theme in there, um, and it's basically um, this album is again is a, a kind of concept album, and it's about I try to think what he said it's about it's about basically someone who's you know, over a twenty four hour period, um, like somebody that's got a psych- psychotic episodes. He's sitting in his bed at night, and he doesn't know if he's seeing things or he's hearing things or if the life about him is actually real, or whether he's just imagined. It's about something that's obviously um, got issues with mental health, etc. Um, so it's been it's based over a 24-hour period. So again, it's a hard it's a hard one, lyric-wise, to try and figure it out. But I've already started on the lyrics, so I've written the lyrics for the, kind of one, the first track, which is quite a long track, um, and Hugh's been writing lyrics as well. So if we take the lyric things between the two years okay. um, on the grand tour, but there's no name for the album yet, um, and the only the only track that I know the name of at the moment is uh, "Back in the Zone." Let's break here for some more music. This is the closing section of the last Comedy of Errors album called "Spirit." This album was more or less a continuous composition, which made it a little hard to play pieces on programs like Prog Watch. But today, I'll give you the epic conclusion of the album, uninterrupted.
go anywhere. Prague Watch will be right back. Before the break, we heard the conclusion of the previous Comedy of Errors album, Spirit, from 2015. Now I'll give you one more piece of my interview with Joe, which contains what I thought was a very funny story. Yeah, fantastic. Look, well, thanks very much, um, Anthony. Really appreciate you, you taking your time out as well. And uh, and it's really good that you could understand what I said. Because <laughs> it's when you go on some radio stations, people find it kind of hard. They maybe don't understand your accent. And I try, I try my best to kind of speak slow, if possible. Right. I, I follow most of it. <laughs> right, yeah. Is, see, see, when you... When you're in Glasgow, when you when you talk to people and you're talking to people that's not from the same country, you do tend to speak a bit slower. But see, after as you said, about ten minutes, you start reverting back to you don't know, you don't know you're doing it, but you start to talk a lot faster. Sure. And then you you think oh, they probably can't understand what I'm saying. It's a, it's a it's a weird story. When I went to America, 1979, I was just outside Detroit, and man. Had a wee, there was a bar just up, she stayed in a place called uh, Southgate, Michigan, and went up to the wee bar, which was about half a mile up the road, walked in, and we're sitting talking to the, the bar staff and the, the, the girls behind the bar. And so when me and my pal started talking to each other, they then asked us, says, What language are you speaking? <laughs> and they went, So when we spoke to them, they went, that's fantastic. You speak two languages. They couldn't understand it was the same language. It was just that we'd slowed right down to speak to them. <laughs> but when we spoke to each other, we spoke that fast, they couldn't understand it. Because uh, Glasgow's got quite a broad um, dialect. Um, but as I said, it's, it's a, a hope um, that when I speak to people, I, I do try and slow down so that they can understand. But I said, when you, after a while... You tend to start forgetting that uh, when I'm talking to you, and you speed up slightly. So hopefully the listeners will be able to understand it as well. Yeah, I hope so. I I think so. You know, I followed most of it. I, it did cross my mind, but yeah. I know you know I probably have there. There's a dialect in the yeah. area where I live, and I I try very hard not to because it's it's a very unappealing kind of accent. I where, think. Where is it? Where is it? You're from? I'm, I'm from uh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, actually. Oh, but were you at were you at um, Rosfest last year? I was not, and I well, wish I had I, been. I should yeah. have been. Yeah. Yeah, it's not uh, that far from where I live, and I I keep saying one of these years I'm going to make it, and then there's always yeah. something going on. Like, uh, I forget. Oh, then there there was another one going on this year that uh, a guy from Unified Pass was trying to talk me into going to, and it's like. Well, it's it happens to be on the same day my my last kid is getting married, <laughs> you know. It's like, well, I'm making that one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah, you got a choice either getting murdered by your wife. Yeah. Or, um, no, 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 that's that. Family. I wouldn't miss it. it. Doesn't matter. We do family comes first for every single thing. Your family always comes first. Absolutely. No matter what. But no, that's good. Uh, Pennsylvania. I've been in Pennsylvania. I cut across Pennsylvania, man. Cousins took me to Sandusky Point, Ohio, Cedar. Oh, Cedar, Cedar Point. Point, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, I was back there in 1979. Okay. What a phenomenal theme park that is. Yeah. Um, but she cut, she went from uh, basically Detroit, cut across Ohio, I think it's Pennsylvania, Ohio, just the top end of New York. So, but we cut across to go to Sandusky Point, yeah. So I've been across, okay. I've only been across Pennsylvania and we're in. Obviously, last year when we were in Rosefest, right? Uh, really nice place. I love Gettysburg; it's a fantastic place. Love them. Yeah, a lot, a lot of history there too. Yeah, yeah. Supposedly haunted. I don't know. <laughs> oh Jesus! I know there's a. But, but we did actually went on. We spent I think four or five nights, and we said if we ever go back, if we're lucky enough to get invited back, uh, we would certainly go out a day earlier, just or two days earlier, just so as we could. Go and see the battle. We saw the battlefields. We actually saw them when we were driving in. But I'd love to be able to go and visit them. Um, the, it's just a, a phenomenal place. And one of the ones that you sit and think, it's like the Scottish battlefields colliding and um, the things that, that are very, very easy. If you ever come over to Scotland, you go to 
collided where um, one of the big battles was. It's deathly quiet. Don't hear birds, nothing. It's just deathly quiet. It's just a big, massive field, but it's spooky. And, yeah, really, really creepy, and it's um, I, that's that's a place where they said um, very, very haunted because the amount of people died on the field. But Gettysburg, I would say yes. It's um, I would reckon yeah, that's a kind of pretty creepy place. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I'd love to get over there someday. I hope I I make it because I I just love all the the you guys have way more history than we do here. I mean everything yeah. around here is no older than about three hundred years old. You know, whereas yeah. over there, I mean, there's uh, Indian relics and things. You know, but yeah. there's not a lot of like. I mean, you have like castles and all these things like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, there's, that's what I'm saying. But we're in Canada, and we're in Quebec. Um, there you go, and there's a lot of kind of European. Obviously, it's French. Quebec's obviously a French city, but mm-hmm. got a, Euro- a lot of European French kind of uh, things with the, the the buildings and all that. They've obviously brought all that kind of stuff over with them. But no, Scotland, as you say, Scotland, Europe, we've got castles. We've got a massive, massive history in, in Scotland and uh, England as well, Europe. Uh, but uh, no, Scotland's a great, a great city. Oh, up until the seventies, it was I would, you would never recommend coming to Scotland. The place was really it was so deprived. Glasgow was a terrible place. It had really, really bad housing, um, really poor people. There was a lot of violence in it. But it's now the second top city in the UK after London. Um, Glasgow is an absolutely fantastic city. I love Glasgow, um, and my partner she stays in Falkirk, so she she can uh, we go through quite a lot to Edinburgh. Um, she likes Edinburgh, but I, I prefer Glasgow. I suppose it's, I don't know if you have things in America. Like we've got a Scotland England thing. If you're from Scotland, then you, you always love to beat England at football and rugby. Sure. Um, but if you're a football supporter um, in Glasgow, um, the Glasgow people and the Edinburgh people have got a rivalry as well because Edinburgh is the capital, but Glasgow is a far b- bigger city than Edinburgh is. And, um, Glasgow's got far more going for it. It's got far more bars, nightclubs, restaurants. It's just such a... Glasgow's an absolutely fantastic city. Now. I love it. I absolutely love Glasgow now. I'll keep it in mind if I ever get over there to do... Now, if you do, you just yeah. uh, contact me and I'll make sure we'll take you out for a meal and we'll go for a couple of beers. That sounds great. I'll, I just have this one problem. My wife, her, her bucket list involves going to Hawaii. Mine involves going <laughs> to the UK. <laughs> I love that story about the girl in the bar asking Joe and his friend what language they were speaking. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed listening in on my chat with Joe. He's a great guy with two great bands. We have some time left, so let's hear one more from the new comedy of Air's album, House of the Mind. This is Tachyon.
That was Tachyon by Comedy of Errors from their 2017 release, House of the Mind. So again, I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember that if you like the show, you can always uh, follow and subscribe. Progwatch.com is the website. You can find past episodes. You can keep up on what's going on. I have links to artists, web pages, and band camp sites, all that kind of stuff for you there. So check it out, Progwatch.com. That's all one word with no hyphen, Progwatch.com. I also have the Facebook page, Prog-Watch, and you can follow me at Prog Squatch on Twitter, P-R-O-G-S-Q-U-A-T-C-H. Or if you want to, you can email me, progsquatch at gmail.com. So until next time, prog on, my brothers and sisters. Yeah.